Rob and this video we're going to continue the March of the King series. This video we're going to rewind review Godzilla the American version 1998. Okay guys, welcome back. Now, <laughs> I have a feeling this video is going to get quite a number of views. I'm sure a lot of people want to <laughs> want to see how this is going to fare among some of my other reviews of the Godzilla series. We all know how most people feel about this movie. You have people who either completely hate it and despise it. There are some people who actually became a Godzilla fan because of this movie, so that's a good thing. There are some people who just feel it shouldn't bear the Godzilla name, but nonetheless is a good movie. With that said, as a Godzilla movie, obviously it, it doesn't, you know, it, it just doesn't fit. I mean, he looks looks nothing like Godzilla, doesn't even have any remote features that look like him, and even his roar sounds more like an elephant than it does Godzilla. I mean, he has the early part of the roar, then as it pitches over, it sounds more like, Aah! like, it just, it just sounds so weird. Now... You know, at the time, the cast was pretty decent. You know, Matthew Broderick was still doing some good movies. Decent movies, I should say. Maybe not so much good, but some decent movies. Uh, Kevin Dunn, who's still around, obviously was in the Transformers, the first three movies, as uh, Shia LaBeouf's father. And um, I think that's pretty much a Hank Azara. Hank Azara, this is around the time he started uh, climbing that ladder for a little bit. But, you know, not an all-star cast, so to speak. Now, in terms of the movie, look, overall... When I look at the movie from the perspective of just a giant monster movie, it's good. It really is. It, it, they really did take the iguana, and that's what I'm going to call it, because that's what it was. They really did take it and, and made it like a true animal, but on a much grander scale. Very flighty, okay? Not like the real Godzilla. The real Godzilla rushes right into the military, where this one was running away. Um, but in some ways, it was kind of clever. I mean, dodging missiles, they couldn't lock onto them. Uh taking the military on a wild goose chase around the city, only for the military to tear the city apart more than the actual monster itself. But, you know, when I think when you first see the... See, when I first saw the movie, I was so excited for another Godzilla movie. And at the time, I didn't know what he looked like. You know, when I sat in the theater, I'm like, all right, this is the first time I'm going to see this guy. You know, even the fact that his feet looked real different in the posters and stuff like that, it didn't matter to me. I figured for the most part... I, I understood it was going to look different, but I figured for the most part they would keep it very much like, you know the traditional monster, much like now. Gareth Edwards' uh, Godzilla seems to be very different, but much the same in terms of his likeness. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> very, very wrong. I was very... I, I think I was in shock for a little while when I first saw the movie. But, now, I, look, I own it, okay? I mean, I still watch it from time to time just because I like monster movies. And from a monster movie perspective, it's very entertaining. You know, it's very comic-y. Actually, it's very much cheesy like some of the older movies, just with better effects, really, at the time. Now, the storyline in of, of itself kind of follows the whole nuclear thing and, and mutations and stuff like that. And basically, Godzilla, though, in this one, is not coming to the city to destroy. He's coming to the city to reproduce. He's an animal that's asexual. And he's looking for a nesting ground, and he chose New York City because it's one of the few cities in the world where, as big as he is, he could actually go through the tunnel system and, and use Madison Square Garden as a nesting ground. It's a place... My cat. <laughs> it's a place that he can go to chill out. He's not, he doesn't want to destroy the city. We obviously saw that much of the city was still standing by the end of the movie. So that makes it entertaining. That was fun. And then the little comic scenes here and there. Uh, Jean Reno, very surprised to see him in this movie after some of the movies he's done, but nonetheless, that was probably the biggest star power there. Maybe if you want to consider Matthew Broderick. I can't really remember his movie of the 90s, but, you know, we'll go with that. But to call it Godzilla was the problem. That was the problem. They should have called it, you know, a lot of people call him Gino now, Godzilla in name only, or they call him Zilla. That's, I think, how the Japanese dub him. I like to call the movie Giant Lizard Lost in New York and Pregnant because that's pretty much the premise of the movie. He's in New York, he's pregnant, he's running around like he's lost, military's chasing him down. I mean, 
again, when you just take your mindset out of the fact that this is a Godzilla movie, it's actually quite enjoyable. Um, I thought when you look at the CGI was decent, a lot of rain once again, and you guys know how I feel about rain, say it time and time again, but overall, it was a decent movie. It definitely was not a Godzilla movie, but it bears the title, it bears the name, it has to be included, whether we like it or not, it has to be included in the collection. So, as a movie that I look at and cringe to call it Godzilla, overall, it's not a bad movie. It's just not the Godzilla... <laughs> it's the Godzilla... <laughs> At the time, it was the Godzilla we hoped for, just not the Godzilla we wanted or needed at the time. That's basically it. You know, uh, years later, I think people now appreciate this movie a lot more than they did when it first came out. I think, I think they can appreciate it, you know, maybe some time after the movie came out. I find now that more people appreciate the movie now. Like, when I talk to people now, they appreciate it much more than they did maybe the time it came out to, like, five or six years after. Especially when Godzilla came back onto the scene in uh, 99 or 2000, depending. And from the from about 99 to 2004, people hated the, the Godzilla movie from America. But after 2004, I think, is when people started to just kind of look at it and say, you know what? It's not Godzilla, but it's not a bad movie. And it's not. It's entertaining. It's popcorn fun. Very simple plot. Nothing crazy. Of course, a love story uh, forced in there. And um, some pretty funny moments. You know, everybody quotes it. That's a lot of fish. A lot of fish. Uh, we lost them. <laughs> Sir, we lost them. How do you lose a goddamn lizard in New York? And just all that stuff. There are some funny moments. There are some very... I, I One of the scenes I loved is when he's running down the street and the military's behind him chasing him. And then they have a blockade, which to me is a joke. How do you have a blockade for a monster that big? And he leaps over them into the water. That, I thought, was an awesome scene. I like also when he was getting chased through the city by the helicopters, and he went and hid. And, you know, he kind of used, you know, guerrilla warfare, ta warfare tactics. You know, something you would never see from the Godzilla we know and love, but clever nonetheless. If nothing else, I got to say he's smarter than the, <laughs> the Godzilla we know. The Godzilla we know is a big brute. He just runs in there and he goes at it. He doesn't even think. This Godzilla at least uses common sense. And we learn later in the movie that he has a bad temper. And that his temper can get the best of him when it comes to using his brain. Because he gets himself tangled in the wires, uh, the suspension wires for the Brooklyn Bridge. And gets pummeled with missiles, which pretty much seals his fate. But look, guys, anyway... You know, that, that's really it. I mean, it's not a bad movie. We can call him Gino. We can call him Zilla. I can call him the big iguana, lost in New York and pregnant. But at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, it's a Godzilla movie. Plain and simple. You go to any Godzilla, buy any package of Godzilla DVDs, and some of those packages have this movie in it. I have a five-pack Godzilla movie collection, and uh, one of the movies that came with it was Godzilla 98. So, you know, take it for what it is. Just when you watch the movie, try not to watch it from the perspective of this is Godzilla. It is not Godzilla. It is America's Godzilla at the time and until he is officially replaced on May 16th, 2014. Then that will be the new Godzilla. And we can still love Zilla for what he is and, and, and what it was. But let's just forget about the fact that it was a Godzilla movie. As hard as it is and, and despite the fact that we really can't, but at the end of the day, it wasn't a bad movie. It was very entertaining. I still like it. Um, it took me a while to get over it too, but I'm over it now, and I can enjoy the movie for what it is, which is just a big monster romp through a city, cheesy fun, cheesy goodness, just like just like the older movies, and that's that. Anyway, guys, that's it for this Rewind Review. Let me know your thoughts on Godzilla 98. I'm, I'm expecting to see quite a few. That movie still sucks, and hey, go watch it again. Just try not to think of it as Godzilla. Just look at it for what it is, a big iguana. That's it. Mutated iguana. I like iguanas. I used to have iguanas. So, anyway, this is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy, guys. Hey, guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. I'm your host, Rob, and this video, we're going to continue the March of the King series. This video, we're going to rewind review Godzilla, the American version, 1998. Okay, guys, welcome back. Now, 
I have a feeling this video is going to get quite a number of views. I'm sure a lot of people want to <laughs> want to see how this is going to fare among some of my other reviews of the Godzilla series. We all know how most people feel about this movie. You have people who either completely hate it and despise it. There are some people who actually became a Godzilla fan because of this movie, so that's a good thing. There are some people who just feel it shouldn't bear the Godzilla name, but nonetheless is a good movie. With that said, as a Godzilla movie, obviously it, it doesn't, you know, it, it just doesn't fit. I mean, he looks looks nothing like Godzilla.